AMD, I need you to try harder. I mean, it's not like you're actively antagonizing your partners, customers, and the media. That's more NVIDIA's jam. It's just that if you want to have your Ryzen moment in GPUs, now is the time to find the hunger that turned you from a player in the CPU space to the A player that you've become. I mean, don't get me wrong. The new Radeon 9060 XT looks pretty good compared to NVIDIA's lukewarm 5060 series, and that might win you some sales. But I want you to look at the big picture. This is an opportunity while your main competitor is distracted by their rapidly growing AI business to change the perception of Radeon from that brand for scrub gamers to that brand that I never knew how much I liked until I tried it. It's an opportunity to build an army of loyal Radeon customers who, through their sheer numbers, will incentivize your board partners to build exciting solutions and incentivize developers to focus on Radeon when they're optimizing their games and software. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Adam just walked out of the keynote and he's got the details on everything from the new Radeon cards to AMD's fastest thread rippers ever. He's also got a segue to our sponsor. Touch me again, you're gonna find out exactly who I am. I'm your sponsor, Odoo. They have over 50 apps to help you cook up your business. Whether you want to put your hands on marketing, accounting, or even HR, they have you covered. The RX 9060 XT is AMD's attempt to appeal to gamers who reject NVIDIA's lackluster 8GB cards, while also offering a profit margin friendly 8GB option for shareholders. To their credit, Unlike Team Green, who has a history of quietly downgrading their lower VRAM variants in other ways, AMD has built both of these new cards using the same Navi 44 GPU, with 32 compute units, up to 3.1 GHz boost clocks, and up to 821 AI tops running through a 16-lane PCIe Gen 5 interface. Thank you, AMD, for understanding that budget cards often end up in budget systems with older gen PCIe slots, and having those extra lanes makes a big difference in compensating for those lower speeds. Power targets are 150 and 180 watts for the 8 gigabyte and 16 gigabyte cards, respectively, and according to AMD, the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte will be the world's best GPU under $350. And I'd like to believe them because shit is pretty dire for budget gamers right now, but there's a couple of red flags that I want to point out. AMD hasn't presented a clear path to ensure that the 9060 XTs will be actually available at their MSRPs. And for another, I couldn't help but noting the way that AMD focused on comparisons between their 16 gigabyte card and Nvidia's 5060 Ti. 8 gigabyte. It's a valid comparison. And the numbers do look impressive, with AMD claiming a roughly 15% better performance per dollar in raster and in ray tracing at 1440p, but how much of that margin comes from VRAM issues that will pop up on the 9060 XT 8 gigabyte as well? Also, what is that? And hence, is that just three display outputs? AMD at least did confirm during the press briefing that these are DisplayPort 2.1a UHBR 13.5 and HDMI 2.1b, so at least you'll be able to natively drive all but the highest bandwidth displays, and I guess if you really need more monitors, there's always DisplayPort multi-stream transport, but it just feels like a bit of a weird spot for them to cut costs. Although if it helped contribute to their competitive pricing, then maybe that's a good thing? Well, sort of. See, the 9060 XT 16 gig is looking pretty good, undercutting the MSRP of the 5060 Ti 16 gig and even the 8 gig by $80 and $30 respectively. But the 8 gig version of the 9060 XT is stunningly non-competitive, something that AMD tacitly acknowledges when they gave it approximately two seconds of screen time during their announcement. Yikes. I mean, sure, they price match NVIDIA's 5060, but this is exactly what I was getting at during the intro. Price matching the guy that everyone hates for overcharging is not enough. And it doesn't seem like they're even trying to compete with Intel's B-series GPUs. The whole thing even just feels like backwards progress compared to AMD's own lineup, with gamers expected to pay $30 more than last gen's disappointing 8 gig card, the RX 7600. Anyway, 
These cards will be launching on June 5th, so keep your eyes peeled for our upcoming coverage. While we don't know for sure if their prices will be fake, what we do know for sure is there will be fake frames. The latest version of FSR, AMD's AI upscaling tech, brought massive improvements earlier this year, and AMD plans to keep mining for extra performance with FSR Redstone, which focuses on improving path tracing workloads specifically. To demonstrate this, they showed off this unflattering demo that looks like it was ripped out of a Project Gotham Racing from Xbox 360 era. Like, I, like what is this? Why, do, why does it look like this? I thought it was a tech demo. Anyways, the updates are, one, Neural Radiance Caching, which learns how light bounces within a scene to try and predict ray intersections before they happen. Two, Ray Regeneration, which is NVIDIA's ray reconstruction, but more amd ear. Three, Super Resolution, which is Super Resolution. And four, Frame Gen, which is Frame Gen. Sounds cool. <laughs> what would be cooler is having more games supporting the tech. Oh, uh, okay, what next? We got AI, AI. Oh, right, uh, new Threadripper. The king is back, baby, and the new Threadripper 9000 lineup looks wild. While AMD isn't packing any more cores than last year, Shimada Peak seems to squeeze a lot of juice out of the move to AMD's more efficient Zen 5 architecture, starting with a 300 megahertz higher boost clock, which doesn't sound like much, but when it's across this many cores, it adds up to a lot. Now, if you were hoping for 3D vCache on these models though, it must be real. We were all hoping for 3DB cache. You're gonna have to keep waiting. But despite the minor changes to the on-paper specs, AMD showed off a pretty decent performance uplift over their last gen in Cinebench before they pivoted to shaming Intel for a while. You know what? Fair enough, AMD. Enjoy your victory lap. Now, naturally, given that these are workstation chips, AMD is also emphasizing how improved CPU performance will allow for improved AI performance when you're working with large models that require multiple GPUs, which is becoming more and more relevant as larger local models are gaining popularity. The best part, though, is these new chips are drop-in compatible with existing 7000 series motherboards with just a BIOS update. Good guy, AMD, finally delivering on a Threadripper upgrade path. Just like we delivered these great cargo pants, available in two inseam lengths for shorter and for taller kings. LTTstore.com. There is bad news though. If you want to get your fingers on a 96 core Threadripper Pro when they arrive in July, they will only be available through partners like Lenovo, meaning that enthusiasts are going to be stuck with the non pro lineup that caps out at just 64 cores with fewer PCIe lanes, half the number of memory channels, and far less supported memory capacity. AMD has well and truly forgotten the Threadripper enthusiasts who supported them in the early days of Ryzen. Cool. Also, there's no pricing information today. It really is amazing how much AMD acts like Intel and Nvidia when they are the top dog. Also coming to the workstation is some new AMD GPU tech. Earlier this week, we did a video on Intel's B60 GPU, and we talked about why it was their most important GPU yet, offering an affordable option for entry-level workstations that required certified drivers, and creating a low-cost platform for running pretty large AI models locally. Meanwhile, AMD is hoping to wriggle their way into the pro GPU market by throwing a whopping 32 gigabytes of VRAM on their new Radeon AI Pro R9700, a GPU name optimized for shareholder value. AMD is also making big strides to improve their software, bringing improved Rock M support to Windows and Linux alike, which enables developers to bring their AI and HPC applications to Radeon. Get it away from CUDA, is what they say. They say, please, please no CUDA, sir. They didn't say how much this GPU would cost, but they did spend a fair amount of time comparing it to the 5080. So, a, a thousand? Probably not. It's probably not, gonna, it's probably not gonna be a thousand. AMD's announcements this year then were a mixed bag of exciting and also underwhelming. I mean, compared to the Nvidia keynote, at least there was something worth talking about. And we took this incredible GPU and we shrunk it in here. Does that make any sense? And AMD is clearly busting their buttons to catch up to NVIDIA in the workstation and data center spheres, but like the rest of the industry, they seem to have forgotten about their customers who don't have six, seven, or eight figure annual budgets. I guess we're all just chopped liver. You know what isn't chopped liver though? Our sponsor. 
Linus is getting older and older. He really needs to retire. That's why I use our sponsor Odoo to help him reboot Linus Captains. Odoo has over 50 apps for business. So we're using the project app to track our progress. Linus told me to try this method to lure the cats out. An hour later, only Noodle shakes my hand to work together. In our brainstorm session, Missy and Brownie remain missing. But Noodle is one hardworking cat. We listed the ideas out and structured our workflow. Noodle agreed to letting me cook the cat. But cook of the cat. We scheduled the shoot within a couple of clicks, keeping things organized. Filming with him has been a blast. But this sneaky cat better not think I will work for free. Luckily, I can easily lock my timesheet along with the project. Odoo keep tasks organized, but to be honest, Noodle didn't contribute much. Lance better not retire. If you guys enjoyed this video, maybe check out the one we did on Intel's most disruptive GPU yet, the Arc Pro B60. 